one carrier gets a new contract can't be substantially lower than that base overlap is a very important thing left seat as quickly as possible reserve versus being a line holder unprecedented hiring time what is up everyone welcome back to a brand new video today we're going to talk about the regional airlines and how to pick the right one for you Let's start this video off by talking about what exactly a regional carrier is. So a regional carrier, think of it as the building blocks for American aviation here. They connect the smaller cities to the larger hubs where you typically see the major airlines have bases. So just essentially think of a regional carrier as the smaller airplanes departing from smaller cities to transfer those passengers to the larger hubs where then they can maybe go transcon or even international. So you probably stumbled across this video because you're in the process of building your flight time, working on your ratings, or maybe you're just curious about aviation in general. But if you're picking a regional carrier, you definitely are probably gonna end up at a major carrier or that's the long-term goal. Think of a regional as just a stepping stone. So don't plan your entire life around a regional carrier. But we're gonna go through the different things like base, pay, quality of life, so on and so forth, to help you decide what regional is right for you. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is bases. Picking a base is very important. Sometimes you might have overlap between regional and majors. Whenever you're picking a regional carrier, I like to tell a lot of people to start with their end goal, start with their major carrier, like your Deltas, your Uniteds, your Americans, and see the regional carriers that they maybe own, so their wholly owns, or their partner airlines and see if you have any base overlap in between them. For instance, American Airlines has three wholly owns. They have Piedmont, PSA, and Envoy. And two of the bases that I know specifically have overlap with Piedmont Airlines is Charlotte and Philadelphia. Those are also bases for American Airlines. So you start to build your life around wanting to move or maybe you live in those places and you're trying to pick a regional carrier. I think that's a great way to start. So maybe American Airlines is your end goal and you really like to live in Charlotte or you like to live in Philadelphia. Maybe you highly consider Piedmont. So I like to make kind of a tally sheet of what's my most important thing, like commuting, pay, bases, quality of life, scheduling, route structure, so on and so forth. And I try and make a pros and cons of each airline. So think of base overlap as a very important thing. Bases are essentially just, uh, you might have pilot bases, you might have maintenance bases, and you might have flight attendant bases, and they're not always exactly the same. But pilot bases might have some overlap between the regional and major carrier. I like to tell a lot of people not to set their entire world up around the regional because for 95% of us, could even be higher now these days with this hiring rate, a lot of people aren't setting the regional carrier as their final destination. So think of the regional as just simply a stepping stone to bridge the gap to get to your final end goal to set up your entire career. So I like to tell people, please, please, please do not revolve your entire life around a regional because you might, at this hiring rate, you might be there for one year, two year, three year, maybe even up to five years, but you don't wanna, you know, a lot, of, a lot of pilots have kids and you don't want to move your kids to a new school, to a new base, uh, maybe, I don't know, Boise, Idaho, and maybe that's not where you want to live long term, but maybe that's a regional base. So just keep this in mind whenever you are picking a regional, having that overlap and that end goal and maybe commuting for a couple years, although I am a big proponent of living in base. I. I advise highly against commuting and I know the majority of airline pilots do commute. Uh, I highly suggest not commuting because it just, it significantly decreases your quality of life and your time at home. And I think that living in base makes life just simply a lot easier. The next thing which I know is very important for a lot of people is pay. It's a very competitive industry right now. When an airline, whether it's a major, a regional, a low cost carrier, when one carrier gets a new contract, the other carrier, you know, they can't be substantially lower than that. So then they get a new contract and it's constantly, this is how it is right now. It's an incredible time to be an airline pilot and pay really, although, you know, it's something that's very important. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty level playing field. I, as of right now, I wouldn't say one regional is extremely superior to another when it comes to pay. But this is something that I want to highly, highly, highly advise is to please read the fine print. A lot of these regional carriers offering 
amazing bonuses, which is great, especially if you're coming out of a lot of college debt or maybe debt from getting all your licenses and ratings. I understand that uh, you, you know maybe you weren't working if you went to ATP, which is a very full-time pilot program. You want to start paying off that debt or maybe just building your better quality of life. Just please read the fine print because there's a lot of, some of these regionals have been offering these bonuses where you get sucked into a multi-year contract and if you leave before that contract, has been executed, then you will get hit with not only paying that back, but penalties, fees, so on and so forth, and they will come after you legally for that money. So please read the fine print with all these beautiful bonuses. And uh, I would say I definitely would not take any bonus that makes you stay at that regional carrier longer than two years. And like I said, we're coming from, in, this is just today's industry and that's why we're making this video. I made this video a few years ago and uh, the industry has warped and it's, it's shaped into this beautiful blossoming career that it is. But just make sure that you don't get roped into a very long-term contract where you essentially get this opportunity to go to a major airline much earlier than you anticipated, but you're in this bonus contract because you took 20 grand to sign on with this regional. So read the fine print. But let's talk about individual pay. Uh, you have captain pay, you have first officer pay, and you have your individual yearly pay. All this data is available. It's pretty accurate on airlinepilotcentral.com. That's where a lot of people pull their information and I highly suggest that you use this. They have tons of amazing information. It's not a sponsored video, but tons of uh, route structure, bases, retirement uh, rates, your, your 401k contribution, tons of great information, types of fleets, aircrafts on order, so on and so forth on airlinepilotcentral.com. Uh, I'll drop the link down in the description down below, but this is where I would say you should go to pull the majority of your information for pay and figuring out uh, what exactly that regional pay looks like and what's best for you. This next topic that we're gonna talk about is flight time. I believe it's very important to get to the left seat at these regional carriers as quickly as possible. Now, I know some people, whenever they get to these regionals and they have flow through programs, meaning when your seniority number reaches the top, you automatically flow through to the legacy carriers. Sometimes this can take as quick as five years, sometimes it can take uh, 10 plus years. So if you are a very go-getter, hustler type of person, you want to try and get to the left seat to get that pilot in command time or PIC time as quickly as possible. And you get to that left seat depending on the carrier. Not every regional is gonna offer an upgrade as soon as you hit your 1,000 hours of airline time in the as a first officer in the right seat. So to get to the left seat as quickly as possible, you have to fly a lot in the right seat. So I tell a lot of people, when you get to the regional airlines, fly, 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 please fly as much as possible and upgrade as quickly as possible, as long as you feel comfortable and confident to upgrade to the left seat at the regional. Uh, I don't believe in force upgrades and unfortunately some airlines have gotten into places where they do have to force upgrade. Uh, I believe there might be some stipulations where you can bypass that upgrade and, and stay in the right seat, but uh, force upgrading can be tough for some people that just don't feel ready. Everyone learns at a different pace and not everyone might feel ready to upgrade whenever that upgrade slot becomes available. But if you do feel comfortable and you get that thousand hours of 121 time at the regionals, I believe that you should upgrade as soon as possible because pilot and command time is so, so, so important when it comes to the resume. All right, now let's talk about quality of life. This is, you. I'm quality of life over pay. Some people are pay over quality of life. Uh, everyone's got their own thing, but quality of life for me is very important and let's talk about it. There's no sugar coating here. Regional flying definitely can be intense. Uh, you're flying more difficult routes sometimes. You're flying into smaller airports. Sometimes uh, it, it can just be very difficult flying. And more importantly, it's, it's just a lot of flying in one day. You're gonna fly four, five, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes even six legs. But now because we have regulations that limit the amount of duty time, thanks to the FAR 117, uh, you don't really see six, six leg, six segment flying as much anymore. But you definitely don't see that at the majors because 
you're typically flying longer routes, but it can be very stressful at the regionals because you're fly, you're going up and down, up and down a lot and getting ready for multiple flights a day can be, can be very tiring and can be very stressful. Another thing to consider about quality life at the regionals is you typically don't have as much time off. The Industry standard for regionals versus majors is maybe 12 days off for reserve time and maybe at the majors it's 13 days. And that one day might not sound like it's a big thing, but when you're flying every single day, maybe as a reserve pilot, that extra day off is very nice. So that's another thing that you should look into. And when it comes to quality of life, I think it's very important to ask people that are actually working at these specific airlines see what their quality of life was whenever they first got hired, see after their seniority moved up a little bit and their schedule began to improve. Ask around about reserve versus being a line holder. And if you guys wanna see more information about the life of a reserve pilot versus being a line holder, uh, definitely drop a comment down below. I think that's a video that we should make here on this channel. So to wrap up the video, the airline industry is evolving faster than ever. We're in unprecedented hiring times. These numbers are insane. We're hiring almost double the amount of pilots that we've ever hired in history. This goes for every single airline out there. People are approaching the mandatory retirement age at 65 and we have to fill that gap. And not only do we have to fill that gap, but we're also expanding markets. Every airline out there is expanding. We're adding more aircraft month over month to our fleet and our route structure is expanding as well. So don't ease off that gas pedal once you get to the regionals. Like I said, getting to the left seat is very, very important. Getting that PIC time can pay dividends, many, many dividends down the road if you get to that major carrier just a little, just a couple months sooner because if we're hiring 200 people a month and you get there six months later, that's 1200 seniority numbers difference right there. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Although you should pat yourself on the back when you get to that regional carrier, make sure you don't ease off that gas pedal. So if you guys have any more questions, drop your questions down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video at all, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new here, if you're ready for more aviation content. Uh, for my OG people out there, we're in the new environment. It's nice to finally make these videos again. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Sorry if I'm a little rusty and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.